actionable notifications. That's something really cool that Home Assistant can do with iOS devices. It's a notification that can pop up on your phone, on your lock screen or on your home screen, that will then give you the option of pressing a button and making something happen through an automation in Home Assistant. That's cool and super useful. What we're gonna do right now is connect actionable notifications to our garage doors. There are a few steps you have to take to get actionable notifications working with Home Assistant. One is you have to install the app on your phone or your iPad. Two, you have to set up the iOS component in your configuration.yaml. And three, you have to set up automations, which includes the notification and the action buttons. Let's get the iPhone app set up. Go to the App Store, search for Home Assistant, find the app, install it. Easy. The first time you open the app, it should take you to the settings page. Under URL, put the fixed public address of your instance of Home Assistant. I use DuckDNS. There's a check mark here that might not appear for you until after we've done the setup for the iOS component in the configuration.yaml file in Home Assistant. At the bottom of the page, you can enable location tracking and notification services. We're not really using location tracking. There was a time when some people were having trouble activating notifications if they hadn't activated location tracking first. So just to be safe, let's go ahead and activate it. I'm sure you don't need all this right now, but I went ahead and activated all of these. Now the important one, of course, is enable notifications. Now go into notification settings, update push settings. Anytime you change something in your configuration.yaml file that has to do with your notifications, you need to go back to your app and update the push settings. If you don't, the changes that you made won't happen. Now we can start making the changes to our configuration.yaml file. To set up the iOS component, scroll down somewhere near the bottom and copy the text you see here. This section does two things. First, it loads the iOS component in Home Assistant, which lets Home Assistant do things like discover iOS devices. And then everything below the word push is setting up a reference to the notification and the action that we're going to create when we do the automation. All of the parts in yellow are going to be unique for you. The name can be anything you like. I called mine lowercase garage one. The identifiers have to be in capitals and in half quotes. Make them something unique, but also short and sweet, since we'll be calling on those in the automations. Now here, put the text that you want to see on your action button. That's it for the iOS component. Pretty simple. Now you need to make automations. There's probably a way to do this with the automations user interface, but I'm gonna do it under automations old in my configuration.yaml file. I guess this is now the old fashioned way to do an automation. Again, you can just copy all of this. All of the text in yellow are the things you can customize for yourself. Every automation needs a unique alias. Setting the initial state to true means the automation will be on automatically every time you restart Home Assistant. Hide entity true means there won't be a button for this automation on your main Home Assistant page. Now for the trigger, the platform is time and this is the format you use to have it triggered at 10 p.m. We'll set the condition as the state of the entity cover.double, which is our larger garage door, when it's open. Now for the action, we want the service notify to notify my iPhone. To find the name of your phone or your other device, go to developer tools and services Click Notify under the domain, and it'll then give you a list of all of the iOS devices. Just copy the name from there. Now under Data, you get to put a title, which is what will appear at the top of your notification, and then a message, which is what will appear in the main body of your notification. Now under Data Push Category, you reference back to the identifier that you used when we set up the iOS component. So that sets up the automation to create the notification. Now in the next part, we're gonna set up the automation that makes the action happen when you click the button. Again, you need a unique alias, and then the initial state and the hide entity can be the same. Now for the trigger, it's an event, and the event type is that an iOS notification action has been fired, which means you clicked the button. The action name refers to which button you pushed. This name also comes from our iOS component setup. Now the action is to call the service cover.closeCover, .cover, and the entity ID is cover.double, which again is our large garage door. Now just restart Home Assistant, and go to the app and update your push settings. 
That's it. Now at 10 o'clock, it'll check the garage door, send you a message, and it'll give you the option to swipe and push a button that'll close the doors if you want them closed, or leave them open if you don't do anything. Here's a nice little bonus. Once you have an actionable notification set up, you can actually link that action with other automations. In this case, I've got an automation that notifies me when the garage door has been open, which is a good time to have a button that says, would you like it to close? Because either you've just pulled into the garage or you've just pulled out of the garage. So all I had to do here was add push and category with the garage one action name. And now the same action button that I set up for the 10 p.m. notification is linked to the garage door state closed to open notification. And then just for fun, added a sound that has a girl's voice saying, the garage door is open. Now we're really done. Let's see how it works. That wasn't too bad, was it? And super useful. Shoot me any questions you have. I'll do my best. Can't say I'm an expert, but I'll try. Thanks for watching. Adios.